Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Domesticated dogs are widespread and popular pets by Chimerans, but wild dogs have a much humbler presence in the ecology of the known world. Unlike on Earth, where wolves are often apex predators in their habitat, the wild dogs of Chimere are relegated to small predator and omnivore niches. In a situation mirroring much of modern Earth, although for quite different reasons than urbanization, the most successful canids are small adaptable generalists like foxes and jackals, and large social predators only show up where the dominant dinosaurs are absent. The pack hunting carnivora niche occupied by wolves on Earth is held by the bone crushing jaws of the common hyena. Their ancestors migrated to Kairul shortly after harvested around 10 million years ago, and around 1 million years ago they returned with a vengeance, having evolved into highly intelligent pack hunters with unprecedented endurance and strength. Although most common on the Housie Prairie, where they go toe to toe with cockatrices, forest rockets, and intelligents, they are highly adaptable species, and are found in the mountains of Nikar down to the Titan Gardens of Arvel. Most predators, such as Borophagine and Homotherium predators that vied for the niche before them, were outcompeted. Common hyenas generally don't like colder temperatures, so despite being proficient swimmers, they have not colonized the southern islands, highlands of Arvel, or Picardia in significant numbers, although a small population in northern Picardia have been found to have much thicker fur, suggesting the beginning of a new species if they continue to thrive. To keep their pups safe from the threats of cockatrices, they dig complex burrows. While this mighty predator monopolizing it, the few cursorial predator niches not taken by theropods, the most successful wild dogs are those who avoid competition either by targeting very small prey or making do in colder climates. Foxes were first harvested in North America around 8 million years ago. The Garden, Picardiant, and Nikari mountain foxes share a common ancestor with the gray fox and island foxes of Earth. Like the gray fox, they are proficient climbers. In dense forests, they have lost some ground to wildcats, but overall are doing quite well, with the garden fox having an especially wide range. The only other fox in the known world is the common fox, and it is the only true fox in Chimere. They share ancestry from three recent harvests and technically comprise two Pleistocene foxes and the modern red fox from the interrupted harvest, although this lineage is only found in the temperate common foxes of Kajar. Some naturalists recognize a wide range of species, but most consider them one animal, with tropical and temperate morphs comprising a majority of ancestors from the first and second Pleistocene harvests respectively. Other true foxes have been found as fossils, indicating more herbivorous species, but it seems competition from a range of resident animals, such as the garden fox, kawadi, pangolin, and aardwolves, was too much for them. All chimeran foxes live quite like foxes on Earth, and have become highly adaptable and comfortable in the shadows thriving in the known world just as their cousins do in the dangers of Earth's urban settings. They lead solitary lives and hunt a range of pests. Although they are appreciated by some farmers for clearing vermin, they have also no reservations about killing and stealing small livestock and pets. Foxes are kept by some farmers on the perimeter of their farms, as their scent of foxes may deter pests from coming in. Their scent makes them poor pets, though some keep them in houses regardless, and the Nakari mountain fox in particular has an agreeable temperament. They are quite popular targets of hunters, being a respectable challenge and having excellent pelts. The Picardiant are especially fond of fox fur, and pelts of the common and Picardiant foxes are staples in their currency. 
The high rate of reproduction has meant that despite heavy hunting in some areas, foxes have not been depleted in any significant numbers. The common jackal, or chimeran wolf, is a phylogenetically complicated species complex comprised of hybrids of all four Pleistocene harvesting events. There are so many events of harvesting and hybridization leading up to the modern populations that, much like the common fox, many advocate for the entirety of chimeran canis being the same species, although others consider as many as 12 species and subspecies. Whatever their cladistic status, it is clear that the adaptable and cunning predator is highly successful in the known world and beyond. In most parts of the known world, the common jackal is a solitary or small pack hunter of small game like rodents, multituberculates, and lagomorphs. Their coat pattern and thickness varies, with small gracile morphs in the tropics and larger robust morphs in the temperate zones. A vast majority of common jackals, especially in the tropics, are almost exclusively descended from a small Southeast Asian species of canis, and are little changed from these ancestors. Some on the Hausi prairie, supposedly thanks to integration with African or golden wolves, are more predatory and aggressive, being larger despite a break in Bergman's rule because of it. Even so, competition with other wild dogs and hyenas have kept them in lower niches. The Codgerith jackal is mostly comprised of coyotes brought from the interrupted harvest. These coyotes were quite successful despite having poor genetic diversity, although they have overcome the bottleneck with the help of common jackals repopulating the peninsula, and together are one of the most common carnivorans in Kajar, forming large packs in some areas and even chasing solitary lions from their kills. Although not a true wolf, instead being a small ancestor of many earth wolves and the coyote, the jackals with a lot of ancestry from the Mosbach wolf tend to be larger and more common in their southern range. The Arveleth wolf is a large jackal that are solitary hunters of small game. They do not form packs, as such a structure would have a high caloric demand that would draw attention from the hyenas and dire bobcats that share their range, not to mention titan crows. In the southern islands, jackals get larger and much more omnivorous, with some island populations being entirely herbivorous or subsisting seasonally on nothing but berries. It is from these wolves that the Kalin independently domesticated the dogs of Chimere. More on that in the episode linked above. In Picardia, where hyenas are the only recently arrived and no large cockatrices threaten them or their pups, Jackals have grown into the massive and menacing Picardian wolf. These are hypercarnivores living in large, complex packs. In the lowlands, especially more arid regions, they are the apex predators of the island. The dire jackal of Picardia is a large species of dole, although for most of their history were erroneously assumed to be the hybrid offspring of wolves and common foxes. They are found throughout the island. As less aggressive and largely solitary hunters, dire jackals have been outcompeted in their lower range by wolves for the most part, although they still hold on in nocturnal niches. They are highly regarded by the Picardiant, being one of the great tricksters of the island, whereas wolves are generally reviled and seen as a cruel brute. The other species of dole in the known world is a robust omnivore that live and hunt much like a badger called the Bear Dog by Assembly Naturalists, roughly translating their common name. They are generally solitary, hunting and foraging at night. They are found throughout the Titan Gardens in both continents and sometimes in closed forests, although they prefer dry terrain to dig their burrows. Competition with the Dire Badger and other Mustelids have made them generally rare in their range, but being faster and more agile than the competition has enabled them to hold on to their niche. Although most wild dogs of Chimere are from Pleistocene harvests, a few can trace their ancestry to much older harvests. During the Oligocene, two subfamilies of canids were harvested and replicated in Chimere, 
Some were in Canini, the same subfamily as all living canids of Earth, and the other were the Borophagines, or bone-crushing dogs. Borophagines persisted in some form in the known world until the arrival of the common hyena outcompeted their last species in the known world. However, the spread of housey grass, which killed off the former prairies that the Borophagians hunted on, brought with it a new bone-crushing dog from the eastern continent, the formidable panther hound. Unlike the robust Episcion, replaced by the common hyena, the panther hound is a gracile pursuit predator, described by the assembling naturalists as the most wretched child of a cheetah and painted hound, with the manners of a chihuahua and tactics of a piranha. These borophagines are unchallenged menaces of the prairie. They do not employ their vice-like jaws to break bone, instead using it to hold on and rip apart their prey. They almost exclusively hunt much larger than themselves, charging in a swarm of a dozen or more. They are swift and run in many miles in pursuit of prey, and are alongside the swift Veriset the only predators to regularly charge and catch the pronghorns. They are themselves prey to both hyena species, not to mention terror birds and cockatrices, but their tenacity and mobbing behavior means that they only target them as a last resort. This means they are quick to process a kill, able to almost double their mass thanks to elastic abdomens in just a few minutes before retreating to their dens. A far less extreme relic of the Oligocene is also found on the prairie. The Etacan is of the Caninae subfamily, but they are so derived that most naturalists have designated them as a distinct subfamily of canids. They are quite like anteaters with long toothless skulls and prehensile tongues. Their long claws are well suited for ripping open termite mounds and infested timber. They are common in the known world, but have a higher diversity back in their homeland. The first harvest after the dynastic extinction was also in North America. Along with bringing a wide diversity of canids, which are now extinct in the known world, it also collected the last of the Amphicyonids, or bear dogs. Amphicyon itself was a robust apex predator in its environment. Despite a superficial resemblance to hyenodonts, they did not diversify like the former, instead slotting comfortably into the niche of vassal predator in Aravel, which at the time was ruled by large basal megaraptorans, and a niche that they shared with the smaller ancestors of the robust monarchs, which generally preferred wetlands and other uneven terrain, while Amphicyon was the vassal of the forests, where they thrived hunting a wide range of calicotheres that at the time were the largest herbivores. Amphicyon produced its largest species at this time, Amphicyon dirus, which stood over a meter and a half at the shoulder to help it tackle large game. Unfortunately for Amphicyon, the context changed. The northbound movement of Arvel made it not only warmer, but also coincided with the return of the Titanosaurs, which completely overturned the ecosystem of the known world. Although the robust monarch Megaraptorans didn't specialize in hunting titans, they were better suited to bring down ungulates and thiscalosaurs, which thrived in their wake, and they quickly outcompeted the basal Megaraptorans and Amphicyon. While the great mass that once enabled it to bring down large game now meant that it overheated in the chase, it seems the last Amphicyon dearus died out around 11.5 million years ago. However, in an exploration of the monsoon forests and the desert coasts of Arvel, naturalists studying potential antibiotic fungus endemic to the region encountered a great gray predator, at first assumed to be some sort of giant mustelid, perhaps even a gobiconodont like the guchar of the mountains north of the known world. A recent study suggests the type specimen, shot in 1910, concluded that it was a relic population of Amphicyon. The Hedgeback, as assembly naturalists call them, is a king of this desolate world, sharing this title with the Silver Cockatrice. For most of the year, this coast is little more than a desert. However, during the summer, the winds change direction for a month or two, bringing in hurricanes which give the equatorial sea of storms their name to batter this coast. 
as much as 95% of this region's annual rainfall happens during this short window of time. This means that an influx of desert fauna migrate to the area for a few months while the coast is verdant in the aftermath of the storms, and the hedgeback and cockatrice feast. Once the game departs, venturing to other habitable places inland, the hedgeback returns to beachcombing which sustains it for most of the year. The land may be a desert, but the very offshore cold currents which contribute to the desolation of the land bring bounties from the southern oceans, and there's enough to sustain the last enduring vestiges of a brief dynasty lost to time. Thank you to Red Lichen for sponsoring this episode. I had a lot of fun with it. Foxes and wolves are some of my favorite animals, and it was fun to dig into their roles in Chimere. It was also fun to introduce the monsoon forests, which will not only be a setting in my next anthology, but will also be the focus of a few episodes over the summer. If there is a topic you would like me to discuss, and you'd like to sponsor it, please email me at theillustratedmenagerie at gmail.com. A single species is $100, a clade is typically around $300, and a larger region or a collection of different smaller clades tends to be around $500. Thanks so much! Have a wonderful day, folks! Cheers!